All right, so today we're talking about strong references, weak references, and practical application of that through the weak set and weak map data type objects. All right, so first we're going to talk about what strong references is and the concept of reachability. So this is what JavaScript does right out of the box. Forgetting all about weak set and weak map, this is how JavaScript views primitives and objects. So here I have an object that I created called person. I'm now using that object in an array. So I've put person inside there. It's the first element in my array. If I run this code, I get the expected result. There's an array with the object inside of it. Now, if I were to do this, if I were to say list number zero equals null, when I log out list, you would expect no to be the value inside of there. So I no longer have a reference inside of this array to the person object. But if I write out, hey, what's person? When I run that, it's there. I still have the person object. But this is what we would normally say when describing this code, the person object. But really what's going on is in JavaScript, if you have an object, that's something that's saved off in memory somewhere. And this label, this variable, is really just a pointer to that. Inside the array, we have a pointer to that. So I have two pointers. I've got list number zero, and I've got person. Both of those things are just pointers to the place in memory where that is saved. So if we were to switch this around and say, OK, person is null. I'm deleting that reference now. And if I look at list, yeah, we'll just do list like that. There we have it. So list, hey, look, it still has that. Even though person was changed to null, we've deleted this one reference. So this is only destroys one reference. So that is strong references, both of these things the person and list zero. So person and list sub zero, both of those are strong references to the object that's in memory. We can get rid of either of them. I can have a dozen of these and I can get rid of 11 of them. But as long as I still have one, that object can still be reached. That's this concept of reachability. I can still get to that object by one of the variables that I've created. One of my objects still points to that thing. So it's still there and it will not be garbage collected. If I destroy both of them, if I say person is no and list zero is z no, I've gotten rid of them both. So at that point, this is no longer reachable. I no longer have a pointer anywhere in my code that's pointing to that thing and it disappears. Okay, so that is strong references, the default state, and reachability. As long as you've still got something pointing to the variable, it won't be garbage collected. All right, now, weak references. When we're talking about weak references, in JavaScript, we're specifically going to be talking about weak set and weak map. So let's talk about, very quickly, what a set is versus a weak set. And it comes down to understanding this. So with a set, we're talking about a unique list of values. The values can be any data type. So it's not going to be just objects. It can be uh, primitives or objects, booleans, strings, numbers, dates, arrays, object, whatever you want. It's a unique list. It's just that everything in that list has to be unique. And it's strong references. Every single value in the set is a strong reference to the object. So even if you delete the other references that are outside the set, the set still has that reference. With a weak set, values must be objects. Some kind of object could be a date object, could be an object literal, could be an array, but it is an object of some sort. So weak set is a list of unique values but the values must be objects. We're not allowed to loop through them. There's no for each. A set will have a for each method that you can actually loop through the whole thing. We can't loop through it. And these are weak 
references. Every one of these objects is a weak reference. So unlike here, where if we set person to null, and then we said, what's in the list? We still had a reference. If we do the same thing with a weak set, we're no longer going to be guaranteed of having that. It can be garbage collected. So let's, let's do that. Let's build one of these. So I will create a new weak set. So this is my unique list of things. I'll create a couple of objects to put in there. There we go. So I've got two objects and I'm going to put both of those into my weak set. We use the add method to do this and we're going to add son and daughter, both of those objects going inside of here. Now, son and daughter, those are both going to be strong references to these objects, these objects somewhere in memory. But what we put here into the weak set, those are weak references. So if son and daughter here, if those come back, uh, or if those are set to null, if we lose those references to those objects that are in memory, these ones right here, if those are gone, the weak set says, oh, okay, I can let go of this. It can be garbage collected. I don't need to hang on to it anymore. And that really is the crux of what a weak set is. So let's write this out. So has son, we'll make sure that these things are, are inside of there. So kids dot has son. That is the object. So this is a reference to this object. So we're checking to see if this object is inside of kids. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to run this. True. Okay. So both those things are inside of that. Now there is a delete method that you can call if you want to remove something from the weak set, but that's not going to impact this at all in the same way that if we changed what was in the array to null or undefined, or we pull it out of there with using the pull method or the shift method for the array, we're just getting rid of that one thing inside of the array, but we're not destroying the reference to it. Here, if we were to actually set sun to null, and then we shift this down, try it again. True, true, false, true. So we set sun to null, meaning we're breaking this connection. We're breaking the connection between the variable sun and the place in memory where the object exists. Without that connection between the two of them, we've broken the only strong reference to that object. We said, okay, the weak set needs to have a reference to it. We said add sun. So we're creating a connection between the kid's weak set and that place in memory. But as soon as the strong reference is gone, this one, sun set to null, the weak set says, oh, okay, well, I have a weak reference to it. So the garbage collector comes along and it gets rid of this data right here. And now the weak set no longer has it. And that's one of the reasons why you can't loop through these things is because code that is somewhere else in your program is going to be potentially destroying these references. And you have no guarantee that it's still going to be there the next time you go and do that. So we can use the has method to find out, oh, is this thing still inside of there? Do we still have that? Yes. Okay, cool. Then I can use it. All right. So that is weak set and weak map We're doing the same sort of thing. We have a map object and we have a weak map object. The difference the biggest difference is that map uses strong references, weak map uses weak references. So we've got key value pairs. They're all unique. The keys are objects and it remembers the sequence or the order that the items were added in. With a weak map, we've got no, loop, no looping 
kind of like with the week set, we can't loop through it. And week references. So it's still key value pairs. The keys are objects. The keys are objects for both map and week map. But being a weak reference means that if the strong reference that exists or the strong references that exist outside of the weak map are destroyed, if the connection between those strong references and the object that's being used as a key, if those are gone, then the weak map says, fine, I'm not going to hang on to it. If you want to garbage collect it, go right ahead. So let's make a quick example here. So I'll create a new weak map. There it is. And we'll create a few objects to put inside. So we've got Fred and Daphne and Velma. Now we have to remember that the objects that we created here, those aren't the values now like they were with the set. These are the keys that we're creating. So say purple and orange and blue are going to be our three values. So these are the three values that we're storing and we're using key objects as the keys here. So that's something important to keep in mind with maps and weak maps. The keys that you're using have to be unique and they have to be objects. All right, so we have that. So now we can check and see if those things do exist. All right, run this again. And true, okay, as expected, yes, all three of those things do exist inside of here. And this is bothering me. I gotta fix that typo. There we go. All right, down to here. Now, what happens when we start to remove things, when we start to take these objects, these strong references to these objects and start nulling those out? Let's see what happens then. And then we'll write out the same three log statements again. Okay, so Fred and Daphne, those are null. They're false now. We do not have those because Fred is now pointing to, or rather containing a primitive value null here at the top. Fred is a, it's like a pointer to that place in memory where that is stored. But now Fred is pointing to the primitive value null. Does it have null? No, it doesn't. Null's not even a valid key for a weak map or a map. So Fred and Daphne, both of these come back as false. Now, let's take a look and see what we get if we create another variable, another pointer. Before we null out Fred, there we are. Now, we've taken what Fred was pointing to and we've created a brand new reference to this thing. Okay run this again, it's still false because we're asking, hey, do you have a pointer to null? No, we do not. But what if we did this? Scooby. What is Scooby? Well, Scooby is a pointer to this piece of memory, this data, this object in memory. Yes, we added here a reference to this. We didn't add a reference to the word Fred. We're not adding a reference to only this variable. We're adding a reference to this specific object. Scooby is a pointer to that specific object. Scooby is a strong reference. So Fred, no, we do not have a reference to Fred because Fred is now null. Scooby, yeah, we never said set Scooby, but Scooby is a reference to the object, which is what's being used here to hold the value blue. And that's it. That's the difference between strong references and weak references. And that's how weak map and weak set work with item, items being removed and added. And if you lose all of the strong references that point to the object that is inside the weak set or the weak map, the weak set or weak map is happy to give up that object to the garbage collection in JavaScript. It's an automated thing. I can't force garbage collection to work, but 
by using these in situations where I'm creating these objects somewhere else in my code and my weak set or my weak map, those are just sort of temporary containers to hold on to those values. Then when I delete them someplace else, my weak map, map and my weak set sort of update themselves. The data gets garbage collected and they're a most up-to-date source of that information. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Hope that helps you out. Maybe you can start experimenting with weak set and weak map. It's not something you want to use all the time, but there will be situations where you might want to um, encourage JavaScript to clean up your data by using these and saying, okay, if I delete it over here, you can go ahead and let go of it as well. I don't want to hang on to that reference. All right, so as always, thanks for watching.